Hi everyone, welcome to Hesh Capital. Uh, you're with me, Balkis, and with our guest today, Faros Hayat Khan. You are the management consultant and also the corporate trainer, mm -hmm. uh, which means you're an expert in workforce competency development. Yeah, I would can say that. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, competency, before that, thank you very much, uh, Balkis. So when you talk about competency development, so it means that what we do here as, as a trainer or as a consultant, what we do is we help clients, we help companies, organizations to develop the skills needed in order for them to be able to do their job. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about competency, there's always a few angles. It's, mm -hmm. it's about your attitude, it's about your skills, mm -hmm. and it's about your knowledge. Mm -hmm. So these are the three elements that we as, as, as consultants or as trainers, we, we come up with the content, mm -hmm. the learning content, the, the development content for employees. Okay. So, so that's, that's the main focus, developing okay. the skills. Yeah. So I kind of want to talk about the problem here, mm -hmm. right? So I think the problem is a lot of companies, they don't really have the learning culture. Okay. Um, so what do you feel is the problem? Where do you feel that the breakdown is coming from? Okay. The learning culture, yeah? So if we look at the learning culture, if you ask me the problem to it, I would say we have to look at it from the individual perspective. Mm -hmm. and also from the management perspective yeah. you see from the individual perspective the main problem might be it, it came from themselves mm -hmm. because they themselves they do not want to learn mm -hmm. that might be a problem you know yeah because because you the management might want them to go for training to go for competency development but they themselves they do not have that desire to yeah. learn okay that's number yeah. one so that's in terms of, of, of self I wish I would say the problem with your own self yeah but the second problem that might happen is the problem from the top management. Not yeah. only top management, but the problem from the leaders. Yeah. They don't believe in training. Okay. They don't believe in competency development. They might think that we do not need them. Or they might think that uh, it's too expensive maybe. So yeah. there are many reasons to it. Okay. So so, so I would say it's so, so that's the, 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 the that's yeah, that's two both, yeah. of the problem comes from everybody <laughs> yes, actually. Yes, yes. Okay, so when we talk about individual, yeah. um, what do you feel? There's a kind of like a stigma around where like there are some people who are stars okay. and there are some people who kind of just are followers, All right. right? And company would kind of just focus on the stars. They don't focus on everyone. But the problem is 90% of them are just you know helping uh, you know build a company, but mm -hmm. do you feel that it's important? Which 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 um, angle would you look at? Is it important to just kind of like because most companies will kind of just pick one person mm -hmm. and like, oh I think this is gonna be my future leader, mm -hmm. so I'm just kind of gonna send them from training, you know okay. all these things, but they are forgetting the 95. What what would you say to that that kind of culture? Okay, my my take on that would be education training is for everyone. Mm. That that's my take. So you can't ignore those the non-performers, yeah. you can't ignore them. Yeah. Because you might think that they did not perform because it's their own problem, but it might be it's a job matching problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. They might be good, but that's not where they belong. Yeah. Like, like myself, for example, if I take myself, I'm not the type that I would be st uh, stuck into routines. I don't like routines. Oh, okay. So uh, I love routines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like myself, no, I don't <laughs> like routines. I would, uh, I would love to innovate, to, to create yeah. something different, you know? Yeah. So, if you put me in, in the audit department, oh, yeah. I, I will go crazy. Is it? <laughs> yeah. well, I love my paperwork. I love all uh, that. Oh, mine, no. So I, I would yeah. prefer to be in a, in a strategic department yeah. where, where you, you let me, you allow me to, to, to think, to, to, grow. To, be in a, uh, to grow, to be independent yeah. in, in deciding yeah. what I want to do, how yeah. do we do it, you know? But so I think like certain people, they, um, I think building that mindset, the growth mindset okay. is a bit difficult to certain people, uh -huh. you know? So I think um, they kind of need to be cult uh, fostered mm -hmm. by the company early on, mm -hmm. um, where they, when they come into a company um, and then the managers will kind of teach them uh, how to grow, like how to learn. I think okay. these kind of uh, things are missing okay. um, uh, in the current um, environment, I think. Yeah. 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 So I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you can say that, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah you can say so that. okay, I want to ask to, uh, you about um, um, organization. Okay. What can the organization do um, mm -hmm. when, um, for example, a lot of organization they deal with budgets, right? So yeah. they kind of have to choose which one, and I think that's where um, 
choosing the leaders come from when oh, there's not okay. a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you feel? In terms of the budget, is it? Is, is yeah, it how do we, how do companies help in terms of that? Like, um, obviously not everyone's going to have, uh, like, you know, a lot of cash yeah. to kind of send everybody. Yeah. So what, what can companies do to mm -hmm. help their staff? Okay. Of course, uh, the main, one of the main issues with, with training development or competency mm. development is the cost. That mm. is, I agree with you. Mm. It's, it's very expensive. Sometimes it's very expensive, especially if you're talking about professional qualifications. Yeah, you know? yeah. But that doesn't mean that it can't be done. Yeah. You can do it. And especially these days, you have online training, mm. online learning. You have yeah. access to even YouTube, which, are f which is free. You know? yeah. so, so there are many resources that you can, you can use. So if you, if you ask me how companies can help, if you can't afford to go for like a, like a uh, professional training, you know, what you can do is yeah. you can actually send them for online courses you know, yeah. or develop yeah. your in-house expertise and, and, and get them to teach others. Okay, but here's my, my issue. Okay. Like when we send, because um, we always send uh, our employees for training, yeah. but does it work? I don't know if it works because most of the time it'll just be like in terms of human resource, mm -hmm. we'll be like, okay, everybody is doing 20 hours um, uh, in a year and we're happy, company's happy, but do they actually learn anything? You know, I don't know if, um, how do we measure that? Because I don't think a lot of people are measuring Mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, the employees are learning, we're just kind of like uh, going through the motions, like okay, twenty hours, yep. and yeah, I'm I'm done. You know, everyone's happy. But I don't think that's what the management, the CEO, would be thinking at night. You know, <laughs> oh my company, <laughs> my staff are uh, finishing their twenty hours. But I think they're more worried about, you know, whether the company's growing. So I don't think sometimes I don't think that learning development is actually helping the mm -hmm. staff grow. I would disagree a bit on that. Okay, I would disagree a bit on that. <laughs> <laughs> I would disagree a bit. Yeah. Okay, your questions, I would say there are two parts in it. Yeah. Number one is, is it relevant? Yeah. Uh, the companies always see that, oh, uh, it's, it has nothing to do with my job. Yeah. So it's, it's such, it feels like it's a waste of time, a waste yeah. of money. Yeah. And the second one is, so you're talking about how do we measure? Yeah. Measure the effectiveness, yeah. measure whether, wh whether is it worth it? I don't know? think a lot of companies are paying attention to that, I think. Exactly. Yeah. So, let me share my one experience when I yeah. before I conduct training when yeah. I was a participant myself. Yeah. Even right now, yeah. I'm still a participant for other courses which I'm not good at. You yeah. Know? So I realized that the problem with 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 training, yeah, you know, with with competency development, especially workshops, courses, the problem would be the training content. I agree with you. It's not relevant to the job. That's mm. a very common problem. Yeah. So that one, I would say th the blame is on the trainer. Yeah. I, would, yeah. I would say it's the blame yeah. is on them. Yeah. You know? But assuming that the content is good, we're assuming yeah. you hire the best trainer, mm -hmm. the, the right expert, the content is good, then it is beneficial. That's yeah. the part I would disagree with. It yeah. is beneficial. Yeah. But the problem would be the second question of yours, which is how do we measure? Yes, mm. I think that is the part where I feel like a lot of um, companies are struggling. How do we measure uh, yes, whether it's yes, working yes. or not. So that is a very difficult question to yeah. answer. So there are many ways to do it. Mm. So li like how we would do it is we have always like a have a six month monitoring yeah. of, of the competency development of yeah. the employees, you mm -hmm. know. So it, it takes a lot of resources to do that. Yeah. And, and HR especially plays a very important role in helping yeah. this, this development and this yeah. measurement as well. Because yeah. most HR, w w what I discover is they think that it's just about Oh, uh, I'm sending them. Uh, not only sending them, it's, it's <laughs> about our leave application, yes, managing your records. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes, that's the common myth. E exactly. That we HR don't know anything <laughs> except <laughs> handling leaves and stuff. Yeah. I think it's about growing. Yes, because, you know? because that's yeah. why, yes, I, I, I understand it's not uh, HR's fault, but mm -hmm. HR is the leader. Yeah. You know? So yeah. HR plays a very important role yeah. to, to bring all the employees yeah to actually have yeah. this learning culture. And I feel like sometimes like employees when they go for their um, training, mm -hmm. what what is usually happening is that they don't practice it during um, their, you know, working hours, you know, they yeah. don't practice what they learn. Mm -hmm. Like for example, when I was young, I learned French okay. one semester, not much, <laughs> but I didn't practice it at all and I can't remember a thing, you know. 
except for bonjour. That's it. And, and bonsoir is, 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 the, is the afternoon, right? <laughs> Some, you know, like because yeah. we don't practice it, yeah, it's yeah, not going to work. You're not going to retain that memory. Yeah. It will be a short-term memory. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the problems come from, um, a lot of the problem comes from um, um, the employees not practicing what they learn, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like use it constantly. I think yeah. that's one so of the. I, I agree with you. I agree with yeah. you because sometimes you may have all the measurements in place. Yeah. Now you have all the systems in place to to, to measure yeah. like whether uh, do you apply what you learn. Yeah. But but yeah, I agree with you. It goes back to the person yes, yes. Uh, themselves. <laughs> you know, they they yeah. they might not be the type of person that I'm gonna use it. You know. Yeah. So so that is a difficult problem. I think too. using it is one but kind of spreading it around, kind of um, um, teaching the rest of the staff who mm -hmm. maybe like, for example, a, a company cannot afford to send like 200 staff yeah. on this, uh, like this one course. But what we can do is send one person or two percent yeah. and kind of just let them um, teach the, the Th rest. That is that's an a ideal situation. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So that if, if, if it can be done, you save a lot of costs. Yeah. So that itself actually, yeah. I, it's one way to solve the cost problem. You yeah. know? Besides now, you have alternatives of, of online learning, which is way cheaper. Yeah. Even you have free learning. You yeah. know? So, so there are, to me right now, at in this age, in mm -hmm. this digital age, there is no reason for us not to be able to have right. this learning culture. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or to grow our competency. There's no reason. Yeah. Opportunities are out there. Yeah. And, and learning opportunities, it's there. there. It's there. Free of charge, even. <laughs> <laughs> some, yeah, some. yeah. Okay. My uh, one of my question. Um, I I feel that there's a lot of stigma um, okay. with companies that they don't accept failures mm -hmm. amongst employees, mm -hmm. and I feel that that's the reason why a lot of employees are worried about learning new things, exploring, mm -hmm. making mistakes. I think. In, a, in order for you to grow, mm -hmm. you need to make mistakes. You need to be doing a lot of, you know, uh, troubleshooting, for example. Yep, yep. But I don't think companies are, um, uh, they are accepting failures, you know. Mm -hmm. They are they are not uh, so accepting of failures. So I think a lot of staff or employees, they feel like, oh, you know, I, I need to perform. I need to always, mm -hmm. but, but when we have that, they are not growing, yeah. right? What do you so feel? So, yeah. so, so let me tell this. Failure is inevitable. Yes. That is inevitable. Yeah. We we learn from our mistakes. Yeah. I myself have failed many times. Yeah. In my in my previous job, in yeah. my in my business endeavors, you yeah. know, I failed many times. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but that's where we learn. Yeah. So that those failures actually help us to grow. So to me, I would say I, I would tell the management, let them fail. Let them fail. Control failure. Uh, of like course, you know, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Control failure. Control failure. Put risk yeah. management in place. Yes. You know? So, but what I'm trying to say is, do not discourage people yeah. from taking up a new challenge, from yeah. doing something beyond their job scope, for yeah. example. Do, do not, because some employees, I realize that they are the types that they have passion in what they do yeah. and they want to learn something new each day. Yeah. And I'm speaking about myself. That's that's how I, I'm. Yeah, I'm like too, that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, I would be discouraged if if my bosses tell me that, oh, you can't do this. No, this is. You, yeah. There's no way for you to do this. So I would be feel discouraged because I myself personally, yeah. I would love to be given the opportunity to fail yeah. in a control environment. Of course, yeah. of course. Of I course. think the environment plays um, a role. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the employees being curious, it yep. plays a role. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, measurements. Uh, in terms of that, yep. these are also, I think a lot of things. So I have a couple more questions yeah, for you. Yeah, sure, sure. But we'll be right back um, after the break. <music> Hello, welcome back to Hitch Capital with me, Balkis, and our guest for today, Mr. Ferris Hayat Khan. So I kind of want to talk about the pandemic. Uh, obviously, we are in the middle of the pandemic. Yep. You can't see the mask. Um, so, um, so has that changed um, in terms of how you are as a trainer? Ha what are the challenges that you face currently? Okay, very good question. Yes, before the pandemic, let's mm. talk about the good old days before yeah. pandemic. <laughs> right? all, 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 all my courses, when I conduct training, all of them are face-to-face -face workshops. Yeah. So we never thought of anything about uh, online courses or Zoom video conferencing. You know? mm -hmm. So when the pandemic hit us, so the challenge that I faced was the shift from face-to-face -face workshop mm -hmm. to online workshop. Yeah. So that's, uh, it requires a bit of adaptation. 
So it, at first, it was quite difficult. At first, to be honest with you, it was quite difficult because we have to get used to the uh, all the video conferencing, you know. And and myself, to be honest with you, before the pandemic, I have never spoken in front of a camera, oh. uh, never at all, because it's always. I face wouldn't to know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> because 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 it's always face to face workshop. So I'm used to an audience which are in front of me. Yeah. Which I believe most lecturers are as yeah. well, and teachers in schools as well. Yeah. And then when, when the pandemic hit, so we have, like my myself, have to practice speaking in yeah. front of a lens. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But how's the interaction in terms of the student? Um, is that difficult, the interaction? Um, ha is it different? Oh, um, oh yes, yeah. yes, very different. In yeah. fact, in terms of effectiveness, to be honest with you, it is more effective to be face to face. That yeah. is the reality. Everyone yeah. accepts that. If it's face to face, it's more uh, effective, mm -hmm. it's more interactive, mm -hmm. and it's more hands-on. Yeah. Especially when you have group activities and yeah. all. But um, we, have to we are in a pandemic, right? Yeah. We're in a pandemic, so we have to accept that, you know. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, of the focus, mm -hmm. some are very good. Some are actually asking questions in the chat box, yeah. you know, some are like that. But s of course, some are very quiet, Yeah. which sometimes I wonder, are, are they you around? Even there? <laughs> are you there? Are you there? <laughs> are <you> even there? <laughs> so my, um, for me, I feel that um, yes, it has a lot of cons there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you can say from a training uh, training provider, mm -hmm. but for me, uh, uh, as someone who wants to learn more, I think previously we are in Estrawa, so um, it was very difficult for us to have a lot of courses mm -hmm. um, uh, back then. So it was difficult for me because I I have a family, you know, I have my commitments. Yep, yep. It's very hard because a lot of the um, the topics that I want to learn mm -hmm. is located somewhere else. So it was very hard for me. Um, I think with the pandemic, okay. I felt like, oh, okay, finally I could participate because they're doing it online. So yeah, I felt yeah. like, you know, that was the good part, yes, you know. Yes, yes. But um, I don't know, for you maybe. <laughs> and for me, to be honest with you, for me, for me, in terms of, my own learning because because yeah. even though as a trainer it doesn't mean that I don't learn I have to keep on yeah. learning I yeah. have to learn unlearn and relearn I have to do that yeah you know? and for for my own self development for yeah. my own competency development I love all this online learning yeah. it's quick it's easy yeah. you have access to it at a very low price you know yeah. so to me it's a good thing it's it's a blessing in disguise with with this digital transformation yeah. it's it's a good thing. But so you feel uh, like blended learning is the way of the oh future? Oh yes, <laughs> that is the way to go. The yeah. way forward is blended learning. Yeah. Mix it up. You may wonder, what is blended learning? What is yeah. it actually? So blended learning is where you have a combination of face-to-face -face mm -hmm. and online learning. Mm. But of course, the face-to-face -face part is subject to uh, the, yeah. the, the PKP and all that, the, the yep. SOP and all, so yeah. of course. But that's the concept. We have combination of both. Yeah. And and of course, uh, at this moment, like right now, mm -hmm. uh, in our heavy pandemic right now, so yeah. we have to be focusing more, leaning more towards online compared to face-to-face. Yeah. -face. We have to do that. Yeah. But yes, blended learning, in fact, in, in your meetings right now, yes. I, I, I got this. It's qu quite something funny. I got this from, from, uh, from a meme. From okay. <laughs> okay. <internet. laughs> it says that COVID-19 teaches us or tells us that most meetings can be just emails. Yeah. <laughs> which is true. Yeah? That's true. <laughs> which, is true. which kind of brings us to another conversation. Ah, okay. Could workplace just be from home? <laughs> but oh. that's for another episode. I don't know. But you know, um, I think uh, once we uh, previously, it was very hard for us to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, because, But because of the pandemic, we as humans, I think we learn to adapt. Yes. And we kind of, you know, um, see that it, it could be done, you know? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And I feel that maybe, do you feel that face-to-face -face learning uh, would kind of um, disappear in the oh. near future? I don't know. <laughs> um, disappear? I, I, I wouldn't say that, yeah. but it would greatly shift towards online. Yeah. Mobile learning, self-paced yeah. online learning. Yeah. That's, that's the shift right yeah. now. We have to accept that. Yeah. But I wouldn't deny that with when the pandemic is over, mm -hmm. we still need this face-to-face -face learning because there are still some great advantages in lo in face-to-face -face learning. Yeah, we can't deny the fact, that especially hands-on. The yeah. best part of hands-on is always when I'm in front of you yeah. and teaching you how to do it. You know? Yeah. So, but but uh, it still can be done online. Definitely it can. can. So yeah. I wouldn't say face-to-face -face is zero. You, yeah. you 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 take it out, eliminate. No. Mm -hmm. But I would say it will lean more towards online learning. 
All right. So that is that's that's the way to go. That's the way to go. <laughs> I just want to ask um, to our viewers out there, what's your opinion? Uh, any um, opinions of yours that would be good? Um, how should they kind of learn, um, make it better for them to kind of learn? What others like you know any advices would do uh, in terms of learning online or just make it a habit of trying to learn you know i don't think a lot of people understand how how to learn basically as in, you're saying that how how do we actually uh, make them uh, my advice as in how they can actually be better in learning yeah. is what you're saying okay like growth like um for example some of them like they're like okay i want to learn but i don't know how oh, and there, okay. there are a lot of people who who doesn't want, probably don't want to admit it but i think a lot of people don't know how to learn how do i learn because if you want to mm. follow school mm, it's just different yeah i think it's just different but how can uh, our employees grow in terms of what habits can they do to learn better? Mm. All right, that, what I like about your question is the fact that you want to learn. So yeah. that is the, the first step. The first Curiosity. step is, you, yes, <laughs> you want to learn, you have the desire to learn. Mm -hmm. And the second part, when you have the desire to learn, then what I would tell you is, be, divide your time, be flexible, mm -hmm. right, A and know that Online means you have opportunity to access it anywhere, yeah. anytime, by mobile, you know. So which means you have to divide your time and also try to reduce time on unnecessary activities online. Distractions. Because, uh, yeah, because online you can do many things online, you yeah. know. So, so you, you may be wasting time like just, just purely on social media yeah. without, without, without having any, any a great conversation, yeah. for example, you know. So Got it, yeah. So, so focus on your time in learning okay. focus on learning yep. that's right focus on curiosity helps um you know all the online platforms yeah, help yep, yep, yep. everything helps so well thank you for joining us today um Feroz, uh, i'm so happy that you are with us today um we'll be back next week uh, stay tuned and i hope you enjoy our show So for companies, developing a learning culture takes a lot of effort. It has to be constant and continuous. So what I would suggest is um, hiring smart people. So what I mean by that is hire someone who has a pension for learning. So, and employers, you have to remember that you are building a team, not a star. So that's very important. Uh, number three is create an environment that has high level of engagement and openness to ideas. Number four, your leaders, they have to be um, good listeners and they have to always try to uh, want to learn. They have to want to learn so that um, the subordinates can emulate them. Number five, companies, please do support your staff uh, uh, so that they are not scared to take risks. So if they make a mistake, um, they are willing to learn and grow from it. But do let me know what you think in our social media. I hope you enjoy our episode today and I'll see you again next week.